Welcome back to Levity Books. My name is Liam and I hope you're reading well. Today we're going to talk about How to Be Alone by Jonathan Franzen, which is an interesting collection of essays. I want to go through this because they're hit or miss, but if you're looking for the right things, this is really important. It's changed my view of what's happening in fiction, what a good book needs to do, and anyone who's thinking of writing like a serious novel, I think this would be great groundwork. And um, yeah, let's get into each of the essays. I want to go through each of them because there's so much variety here that it's, it's really impressive. I've never found such an inconsistent essay collection. Really, from one essay to the next, it can be five star, one star. I couldn't read some of these. I loved reading some others of these. So let's go through them so you know what you're getting from this book. So these are the essays we have in this book. We have 15 essays of varying length and varying quality, as we'll get into. Although the first is really a preface, so we're right about this book, um, which I'll summarize in. This essay collection came out um, just after 9-11. Um, a lot of the essays were written before that, and so in the introduction he's saying, some of the things I said aren't super relevant already. Um, and also he just apologizes for the tone he takes in some of the essays, um, especially his essay Why Bother, which surprisingly I actually think is the best essay. I think he doesn't apologize for the right essays in this part. So the first essay, My Father's Brain, is a good one. I'd say it's four star and what we're talk dealing with here is Jonathan Franzen talking about his father dying. Um, and I think it's really interesting to anyone who's read the corrections. Something I should say at the beginning of this review is no one should read this before Jonathan Franzen's fiction, The Corrections, or Crossroads. You read those first, maybe read Freedom too, and then you come here. This is almost a character study of Jonathan Franzen. This is like reading Jonathan Franzen's diary, his writer inspiration. Um, so don't come to this book thinking this is representative of Franzen. This is almost the backstory for Franzen's writing and his views on literature as a whole. Um, but I find that they're shockingly interesting and important and still relevant and this is the best thing I've really found talking at like a down-to-earth level on what people are trying to do with literature today. <laughs> so getting back to my father's brain, this, I mean it's a bit of a spoiler for me to say that it is related to the corrections but, but it very clearly is and I think you can see that Alfred from the corrections, the father is very much based on Jonathan Franzen's working through these emotions that he deals with in in reality, and it's dated here, quite close to the time of the correction. So, I think what makes the correction such a powerful book might be that Franzen was writing from a very real place at the time that it was happening, um, and so that often seems to be the case with, with literature that when people seem to be writing at the time of something that's severely um, happening, something se severely is happening in their life, something severely um, emotional or unpredictable, I think that can be such great inspiration for the work. And it, it could be why it seems so true and honest, is because it came from that. The second essay, Imperial Bedroom, I didn't really like. I don't think I can even remember much of it because it's just about privacy in America. You know, people aren't taking care of their credentials and there's a security risk. At, it just, this is before the time of like true internet, um, you know, viruses and things. So it's like, there's not much depth here, not much relevance, very cliche, nothing original. Um, so yeah, I, I pretty much skimmed that. And that was from 1998. Why Bother is clearly the reason this book exists. It was an essay published in Harper's Magazine and it's really important because what he's saying is why bother writing in an age where no one is really reading? Why bother talking about things when people are just watching TV? It's got the same importance to like contemporary issues as David Foster Wallace's E Unibus Pluram essay, in that the idea that me the media is is saturating literacy, and so in an age where we have to talk about something that's relevant and media is all there is, and media is subsuming literature, it, it, why bother is addressing how do we get out of this disruptive cycle for literature? And 
it's a really great essay. It talks about why people read, why people write. Um, it talks about his what he finds fascinating in books, uh, Desperate Characters by Paula Fox, which incidentally is actually the first place I heard or read about Franz. And he was he wrote the foreword for that book. And I read that book because someone told me that because I liked Infinite Jest, I would like it. And they were right. I love this book. But Franzen is the one who really loves that book. And it comes across here. He even quotes a lot of Flannery O'Connor, um, The Mystery of Manners, which is the book I read immediately prior to this. And I had no idea it related. And so it's actually really interesting that you read one book, and then you pick another book up. And by chance, you have quotations from the book you've just read. Um, that's always a wonderful thing. Um, and so there's a lot of advice here for what do people want in American novels. And it was written in 1996, so, um, and still, I don't think anyone's got much further than this essay. We're still at this rut of not knowing whether postmodern novels still exist, whether post-postmodern novels exist. I think they do. I like to think they do, and I think Brandon is trying to write them, and that's what I want to promote, and that's what I love. Um, but it's still formless. It's still not quite hard. It's, it's still quite hard to know what it is that we want from literature. But I think this essay is pivotal into understanding what literary fiction is trying to do right now and what novelists need to or should do to respond appropriately to the cultural change and literacy going out the window and people wanting something more immediate and something more honest and true to lived experience. Lost in the Mail is about Jonathan Franzen literally following post-office workers around and trying to say something about how post just isn't a thing people do anymore, or I should say mail. Like, people don't write letters anymore. I, it's such a boring essay. Like, I couldn't read. I skimmed after the first page and nothing happened. I just couldn't. I just... And this is what I mean about this essay collection. He can go from saying something so monumental about what's happening in fiction to just following post office workers for, for, for such... With, with nothing to say, really. Sifting the Ashes, number five. Again, this, this felt like um, a school essay. He's talking about how cigarettes are dangerous, but people still do them. American culture doesn't follow what it's told to follow. It's just like, why are you writing this? This is something that you'd write as a teenager. You know, it's like a, the ethics of smoking, write an essay on it for English. Like that is what this essay reads like. It's so, it's so immature, so premature. And these are his early essay collection, you know, but it doesn't need to. It almost doesn't need to be there. These essays, if anything, just show how far he's come. He also just writes some really just anecdotal but kind of irrelevant stories like Erica Imports where he talks about packaging goods and sending them off. Like It's funny, it's an enjoyable but it's kind of like it doesn't fit the rest of the collection, it doesn't really say too much. Then we have The Reader in Exile which is a bit ironic because now he's talking about how he has a TV and he ends up just watching it and not reading so much so um, that's also good but it's it's okay. It's not as, a, as important as why bother because it's less instructive and more understanding that sometimes some people just don't like to read all the time and that's okay. First City is about friends and living in New York but again there's not too much here to say. Scavenging is about depression and it's quite raw and it's quite an interesting essay because it shows how he got burnout sometimes in writing. Um, and how he went through phases, and this is one I liked. Control Units is kind of just bizarre because he's he's talking to Tupac's dad. In Control Units, he walks around some prisons and interviews some of the pri prison guards and some of the prisoners. And it's just bizarre because he ends up talking to Tupac's dad and he's got some, like, discussions with Tupac's dad and this. And you're just reading this book and you're about this far through, uh, you know, you start from here. And you're just wondering, like, what am I reading? Collection feels like you're reading documentaries, if that makes sense. But the documentaries are quite mundane and, and banal. It seems like he tried to do some investigative reporting, um, and I'm sure he did do some, but what's here is just so, like, this is kind of boring. Like, it, it's, it's clearly just not, um, not his forte. It's not that interesting. Maybe that's the point, but I think for most people, you, 
it's just some of these essays just will just won't be memorable. And here we have the essay that made me read this collection, Mr. Difficult, my favorite essay of the lot, um, which is Jonathan Franzen's essay about how he fell in love with Fr William Gaddis's writing. That's what inspired him to be a writer. Clearly, he just started reading the recognitions and JR. He got most of the way through, but at that point, he just stopped and realized that this is just too difficult to be enjoyable to the masses. And it's really interesting because it approaches that divide between who we want to be and how we want to be admired. Like it's, he appreciates what Gaddis does intellectually, but he also at the same time recognizes exactly why he will never have a wide readership and why eventually that might be more important than staying true to his principles. And that obviously as is a bit controversial. There's a lot of backlash, like Ben Marcus's uh, counter argument to this uh, was saying that if we just stay basic, then we give up all interesting and original things that happen in fiction. Fiction is just going to be boring and nothing is going to be um, exploring new things. And again, I, I like that view of Ben Marcus, but at the same time, I think ultimately I agree with um, Mr. Difficult. In Mr. Difficult, Jonathan Franzen introduces a model for writers. He says there's a status model and a contract model for writers. Now, status writers believe in the timelessness of art and culture, and they want to talk about genius and historical importance, and they want classics to be difficult and challenging and tough. And, um, they're the more elitist uh, readers and writers who want books to be hard because to say hard things, it should be hard to read them too. The contract model is the opposite model, which says that the purpose of literature is just to form a connection with the reader. And if people don't like reading your book, then it's the book's fault. So the book must serve the reader. It's almost like the customer is always right, but it's the reader is always right. And so the purpose is really to form a connection which is widely available or accessible to readers. And I think that's the role that Franzen originally uh, says that he wasn't, but now he is. And I believe him like Gaddis is the pure status model writer and contract model is just YA or just general fiction that's really entertaining. As a reader, I think I am also a contract reader. I do like tough and difficult books, but as you can see from this channel, some of the status model books that tough books, I, I will shun if I just find that they aren't saying something that's understandable or enjoyable or meaningful or good to the world. Um, like there has to be utility in it, um, which is what the contract model suggests, um, which is, you know, accessible literature, which Franzen writes, and it's clear that he came to writing wanting to be a status writer, you know, writing things like Moby Dick or, you know, Mason and Dixon, uh, Proust. These are the examples he gives in the, in the essay. Um, and I think we all do. We all want to think at first, oh, I need to be like these writers. But then eventually we realize, oh, the most important thing is that people like the book and people can understand the book. Um, and so it's an argument for simplicity in this and I think it's very compelling and I think he, he was definitely right in putting it because ever since this essay, there has been a decline in status writers and there's been an increase in this contract writer, um, readers and writers. Like general fiction is at an all time high. People aren't really reading most modern literature or dense literature anymore. There's a small handful of us, but you know, there's not many. And this is written in 2002. And I think it's a wonderful work. One of the reasons I really like Franzen for this essay, aside from the fact that I think it's a great way to think of literature between the contracted status model, it's simple, but it's a good starting block for categorizing what fiction writers are trying to do in the world right now. But I like he has the modesty to say he read Gaddis, he was didn't have the patience for it, um, and he was inspired by it, but couldn't emulate it. And 
has decided to go another way. And I think it takes a lot of um, guts to say that. It takes a lot of guts to say, this book was too hard for me, or I can't be this thing that I wanted to be. And so I really like that, and I think it's weird that people criticize him for that, just generally. Books in Bed is actually a pretty good essay. I thought it wouldn't be. I thought I was assuming it was going to be a downhill after that amazing essay, Mr. D Difficult, but Books in Bed is also a very good essay because he's talking about how people write sex scenes in fiction and how they're always bad and uncomfortable, yet they keep happening. Why? Why do we need these things? And why are they always so exciting and then they just always are anticlimactic? Like they're always build-ups to something that never really is enjoyable or interesting to the reader. And I think the fact that he mediates on this in 1997 at a time where it'd be quite bold for a man just to start writing about how... Um, women and men try and write about sex in classic fiction. Um, I think it's a really interesting essay because he talks about some slightly uncomfortable things but also finds what should be a good sex scene and what makes a good sex scene. And I think clearly through this process it worked for him because the sex scenes in Crossroads are one of the most enjoyable ones that I've read, the most realistic, the most telling and a lot of people give Franz and Stick for the way that he writes about sex but I think barring Annie S. Nin he does it better than anyone else. Meet Me in St. Louis is also a very good essay. It's talking about how when the corrections became popular how he just didn't want to do the interview for Oprah and why he decided not to be part of the Oprah book club and it does show that he really stuck to his guns that there was some good standing one's ground in the whole process of him becoming a popular author. I think most people to win the National Book Award would, you know, sell out and instantly do whatever it takes to keep the, the books flowing and the money flowing, but he's really stood his ground here and I, I really appreciate that he wrote this because it does show what kind of a writer he is and it does show... Um, Again, a lot of backstory to the corrections and other stories that he writes. Um, but I did really um, did like it. And one of the things that strikes me about the best essays in this collection is how vulnerable and open he can be about his life and his, his approach to reading and writing, which is a candor I don't think we find in a lot of fiction. I think this is why I think he might be leading the new, new sincerity movement of writers whether that exists or not, I, I think it exists, and I'm just going to push that theory along. I think he is post-postmodern, and I think this is a landmark work for literary fiction theory. This is where postmodern became post-postmodern, um, at least is one of the roots, and uh, I will stick to that statement, even though there are some terrible essays in here, as I've mentioned. <laughs> and finally, Inauguration Day, January 2001, not much to say here. Very short essay, just about what it's like to be in the polit political landscape of America at this time. And again, as he said in the forward, kind of dated because of 9-11, but, you know, it's still there. So what to make of this? Jonathan Franzen has written some other essays. I'm not running to read them because this is all I needed. I just needed to know how he got from the corrections to Crossroads, because Crossroads is my favourite book, and I think it's a good signpost for what's happening in fiction in the future. And this is it. It shows that in the early nine, the late 90s and the early noughties, Jonathan Franzen was finding out what he wanted to write. And I feel like the corrections and crossroads are these, as he describes, he likes novels like cities. He likes them to be big things with multiple people, multiple little areas of um, characters that he likes. He likes novels to be complex, like a skyline of a city. And I see that in the corrections and crossroads and the way the families are constructed, the chapters are revolving around them. It's all down to some theory he was working out in the late 90s about what fiction should do. And it's very clearly on display here in the best essays I mentioned. Um, Why bother? Mr. Difficult, Books in Bed um, are the main ones. And I think it's really um, it's really good read, only if you like Franzen. Do not read this if you haven't read Franzen before, because you're just going to get a confused notion of 
what he writes and um, you're going to see all of his early writing which is surprisingly not not at all like his, his later work it's just not not very good but I have it on display here um, alongside these big ideas which came to fruition in some of his great fiction I think that almost has a lot of humility it's like sharing your early work and um, I'm just glad that we can have such a great writer in the world that has the guts to do that. So, yeah, with that, how to be alone for people who are trying to figure out what the next big thing in fiction is. This is a great point. Recommend this to all writers. This might go further than Mystery of Manners, which I, I didn't review because it's the same. It's a similar kind of book um, about writing theory and what, what, what should make a good story. But... This and that, both great books for good advice on how to write stories. So with that, happy reading.